So this was a slide I used the last time Jordan and I debated on the same exact topic. This was five years ago. This, is the, this was the evidence then to, uh, for new adjuvant chemotherapy for borderline resectable and resectable pancreatic cancer. And uh, that was funny then, I guess not so funny now. Um, so anyway, it's, so things have changed. Things have changed since then. And as Jordan pointed out, there are, there are strategic advantages to using new adjuvant chemotherapy or chemoradiation. You want to select the patients who are most likely to benefit from surgery, select out the patients with poor performance that might not benefit uh, from surgery or tolerate it well, and also uh, select out the worst biology. You want to deliver systemic therapy early into all. So for most of what I'm going to talk about, I'm not saying that neoadjuvant chemotherapy shouldn't be used, but I am saying that neoadjuvant chemoradiation should, should also be used. The purpose of the therapy is to improve the curative resection rate, which is an R0 resection. Anything other than R0 resection is not curative. Also, to improve local tumor control, and as Jordan pointed out, that would get better if our systemic therapies were better, and they are getting better, to reduce the distant metastatic failure rate. And remember, um, neoadjuvant chemotherapy or chemoradiation does not change the stage. So we use this term downstaging. It's probably an unfortunate term. The radiographic stage does not change. So it is important to stage your patients radiographically before deciding what to do. We have now uh, resectable, which is not involving vessels to the left there. Um, and uh, that is, with the current staging, considered resectable, no vein or artery involvement. Borderline is split between vein involvement and artery involvement. That can be T3 or T4. And then unresectable that Jordan showed some data about is completely encircling or greater than 180 degrees arterial involvement. I would submit that radiation helps the most in this borderline group because without radiation, the mar regardless of what you do, you have high rates of non-curative operations. So with borderline resectable, this is Bob Wolf's slide, you end up with a positive margin pretty much all the time, and I'll show you some data. Um, this is in a patient, this is an anecdote, this is a borderline resectable pancreatic cancer with the SMA right here, a professor who, from Houston at Rice University who lived in my neighborhood, who was operated at another institution. They tried to take out a borderline resectable pancreatic cancer and left a lump of tumor behind, an R2 resection, certainly not curable. The, re the reconstructed jejunum is right by that. Very difficult. With modern techniques of radiation, we may be able to work with that, but this is something we want to try to avoid, obviously. Now, this is an older slide, but this, the, the data is still consistent. If there's an R1 or R2 resection, it's not a curative operation. You'll recognize the mean survival of 10 to 12 months as being something that you can get with chemotherapy or palliative chemoradiation alone. So what, is, what does radiation do? Um, consistent with radio, what we know about radiobiology, the most oxygenated cells at the periphery of the tumor are sterilized with radiation. We don't even know if chemotherapy gets to the primary tumor. So that we, but we do know that with chemoradiation, the margin is negative 90% of the time, at least. We also know from this work at MD Anderson, this is Matt Katz's uh, work uh, from MD Anderson, looking at patients that had um, a very consistent radiographic staging, uh, chemoradiation, then surgery, and if the stage changed, and actually the stage did not change 98% of the time. Sometimes you see a little regression from the artery, but you almost never see it regress off of the artery. That does not mean that, that the patient's not going to benefit from surgery because that margin can be negative if you give effective new adjuvant chemoradiation. That's what radiation does for T4 patients. So I'm going to start with a series of studies uh, that have looked at, that, that have reported on their margin negative resectability, and I'm going to focus, I'm going to shift away, from, conclude the vein involved and the non-vein involved T3 patients. So I'm going to go by T stage, which includes the favorable borderlines first. This study from MD Anderson was, uh, this, the resectable definition had always been vein involvement or, or no involvement. And as you can see, 600 patients receiving chemoradiation from 1990 to 2014, um, pretty close to uh, uh, 40 years, uh, or 25 years, 96% uh, uh, T3 uh, or so. Uh, about half had vein resections. Some had a smaller number of arterial resections. The, the positive margin rate's around 10% overall. Local recurrence is low. Survival is very good. 
Now, if patients got chemo radiation and had a positive margin, they actually have a very good survival with radiation. 20% five-year survival if the margin's positive because that margin's sterilized. It looks positive under the, under the microscope, but it's really not. You can compare it to other institutions of excellence with a positive margin rate uh, uh, survival uh, in the 14 to 15 month range uh, without chemo radiation. Here's a study from Germany published in JCO, uh, patients with uh, new adjuvant chemotherapy, gem cyst, um, all were T3. Um, only a minority had vein resection, indicating not many had vein involved, so very favorable, had 20% positive margin and 4% local progression that resulted in no surgery, so 24% non-therapeutic surgeries. Uh, this uh, study is from Vienna, uh, where a similar number, this, do two different chemo regimens, GEMOX and GEM uh, docetaxel, um, a, an overall 35% rate of either positive margin or local progression preventing surgery for T3 pancreatic cancers. 30, so 35% of patients not curative in, in, with radiographically resectable pancreatic cancer. In Australia, here they compared their uh, surgery first approach to their new adjuvant chemotherapy approach with gemabraxane. They did not reduce the margin negative resection rate. It was 36 without chemo and 29 with chemo, not significant. This was from 2017. Uh, from uh, Memorial, um, there was a phase two study performed, uh, Jim Tidyman, Oxali Platin, and these were resectable with no vascular involvement, according to the paper. Um, the uh, R1 resection rate was 26%, and another group of patients were explored and could not be resected. So I'm sorry if I'm interpreting this wrong, but I conclude that 45% of those patients were not able to undergo uh, curative resection that had radiographically resectable pancreatic cancer with no vessel involvement um, after gemcitabine and oxaliplatin. So shifting to borderline resectable, um, we uh, can look at uh, the, a study from Japan where with surgery uh, first was compared to new adjuvant chemotherapy, 82% positive margin with surgery first. So that's obviously not the best option. New adjuvant chemotherapy with GEM S1, 25%. So an improvement, but still 25% of patients had a positive margin. At MD Anderson with borderline resectable pancreatic cancer, and these were uh, half of them had arterial involvement, 6% um, of patients had a positive margin. So that shows you, you should have had at least 40% of those patients or so had positive margin with with, um, without uh, chemo radiation, and said it was 6%. That shows you the margin uh, was sterilized with the radiation. Here's a study not published yet from Joe Herman um, at Johns Hopkins. Borderline and, uh, and locally advanced unresectable patients uh, with, uh, that received chemo or chemo followed by stereotactic body radiation, 56% positive positive margin with chemo alone, and 14% with uh, chemo followed by SBRT. Obviously, no comparison there. In summary, for borderline resectable pancreatic cancer, radiation has a three to five-fold increase in um, uh, reduction in the positive margin rate for T3 and T4. F uh, for the T3s, it's around 10% uh, with radiation at around 25 to 45%. For T4s, it's similar, 6% with, for, for, uh, with radiation and 25 to 56% with chemotherapy. And remember, a positive margin usually means death if radiation is not used. Um, that does not necessarily hold true if they've received chemo radiation and have a microscopic positive margin. Um, now, radiation, uh, there's a trend towards wanting radiation regimens to be more convenient, which is appropriate. So now we have data supporting a one-week course two-week course and five-week course options. They can all be delivered safely and effectively, and in fact, it's actually, the surgery is better tolerated when you give chemo radiation because there's less pancreatic and jejunal nasomonic leak, so there's no evidence that it's gonna increase uh, toxicity or, um, improve or, or, or uh, lead to uh, non-therapeutic surgeries or anything like that, according to Andy Lowy's paper that's now 15 years old. And, here, here's, here's just a list of options, 25 gray in one fraction, or 33 gray, sorry, in one week, or 33 gray in one week with SBRT, 30 to 36 gray in two weeks, 50 gray in 5.5 weeks, all acceptable, um, and certainly can be used in, uh, according to the patient preference and logistics. Um, 
We do have a randomized trial, fortunately, comparing um, chemotherapy with Fulfox, ver Fulfirinox versus uh, Fulfirinox uh, followed by stereotactic body radiation in one week. This is the Alliance study that's now just opened and uh, available for accrual. It's very important to accrue uh, patients to this study so that we can get better answers to this, to this question because we really don't have any randomized evidence and this, this will be our first uh, 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 trial that addresses uh, this in a randomized way. So um, this is for borderline resectable, maybe the unfavorable end of borderline resectable patients with, um, with vein involvement or, or minimal arterial involvement. And that's my last slide, thank you.